entitled Investigating a New Wave of Targeted Therapies for Acute and Chronic Leukemias. Before we begin, I'd like to call your attention to one change in today's press conference, that is Abstract 559 will not be presented this morning. As a reminder, I'd like to ask you to please be sure to turn off your cell phones and any pagers you may be carrying. After all the presentations this morning, we will open the floor to questions and finally the phone lines to allow for questions by reporters who have dialed in via teleconference. To ensure that we have plenty of time for all of the presentations, we'd like to ask you to please hold your questions until all the panelists have finished their presentations. With that, let's start with Dr. Sylvie Castagna, who will discuss results from a phase three clinical trial of the monoclonal antibody gemtuzumab azogamycin that suggests that the investigational therapy may be a promising option when used with specific dosing strategy in conjunction with standard chemotherapy to treat older adults with acute myeloid leukemia. And details of the abstract can be found uh, in abstract number six. Dr. Castagna? So we would you would apologize for my English <laughs> first. And um, gentuzumal ozogamycin is a humanized monoclonal antibodies against CD33 antigen. CD33 antigen is present on almost 90% of blast cells in acute myeloid leukemia. So this drug is a targeted drug because at it, uh, a very potent uh, drug, chemotherapy drug, is linked to uh, monoclonal antibody. So the monoclonal antibody is going to uh, tight the cells, and after that, uh, telecamycin will enter the cell and destroy the malignant cells. So when it was developed, uh, this new drug, gemtuzumide azogamycin, was a very prom prom uh, promising drug to treat acute myeloid leukemia. And uh, the fact is that uh, for four decades, we have no new treatment to treat acute myeloid leukemia, except the two drugs that we are using uh, in every patient, and these drugs are donorbicin and cytarbine. So we did not have a new drug for many decades. So gemtuzumide was very promising, but in phase two study, it was used at the dose of nine milligrams per square meter twice on day one and 14, and rapidly it appears that this dose was too toxic. So nobody were able, was able to uh, combine chemotherapy, standard chemotherapy, donorubicin and RVC, with gentuzumag. And for that reason, uh, there was some problem in the development of this drug. And at the end, after a phase three uh, negative study from the SWOG, this drug was withdrawn for the US market. In the meantime, in, uh, with uh, the Alpha Group, a French group for the treatment of acute leukemia, we developed a new regimen by fractionating the dose of uh, gemtuzumine in, the, in a 3 3 3 regimen. So we gave to the patient 3 mg per square meter on day 1, on day 4, and on day 7. And with this new schedule and this new regimen, we were able to uh, demonstrate that the there was uh, a more important efficacy of the drug and uh, also less toxicity because the drug was too toxic uh, using at the nine milligram per square meter dose, was too toxic for liver and for hematological uh, uh, blood cells. So we, we, we performed two phase two study in order to assess the safety of this new regimen and after that we came to the phase three study. And this is the phase three study that I'm going to present uh, uh, tomorrow uh, during the plenary session. And during the phase two study, we, we treated previously untreated de novo AML patients aged 50 to 70, either by donorubicin and RSC or by donorubicin and RSC plus the 3 regimen. And we demonstrated that it was uh, with this uh, trial 
that uh, uh, overall survival, relapse free survival, even free survival, was increased in patients uh, who received gemtuzumab, and that we did not have uh, two uh, important toxicities, so that we have no more deaths in patients treated with uh, gemtuzumab than in the patient uh, in the control arms. So uh, our results are significant. And uh, uh, it appeared to, to us that uh, this new treatment, uh, gemtuzumab, has to, be, uh, has to be combined now with the standard chemotherapy in AMR. I would mention uh, also that uh, we looked for some interaction between sub ML subsets uh, patients and uh, result uh, and treatment, and we show that the treatment was particularly uh, effective in patients into what we, we name the favorable and intermediate cytogenetic risk group, and this group represents uh, approximately 80% of patients treated with AML. So our conclusion is that uh, we have to, to ask the question to all the community of hematologists to combine now in frontline therapy gem to the mild azacamycin, so this monoclonal antibody, to uh, standard treatment donorobicin and cytarine. Okay, next is Dr. Catherine Roberts, who will detail how a recent study focusing on a unique subtype of high-risk B-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia has used advanced genome sequencing to identify new targets for the treatment of this difficult blood cancer. And this study is outlined in abstract number 67. Progenitor acute lymphoblastic leukemia is the most common childhood malignancy, and relapsed ALL remains a leading cause of cancer death in children today. Researchers have shown that genetic changes are important determinants for the risk of treatment failure, and it is currently not possible to increase the dose or intensity of existing therapies due to toxicity. So we need novel, less toxic targeted therapies to improve the overall survival of high-risk ALL. Our group had previously uh, performed genomic profiling of childhood ALL cases with no known genetic changes. And we identified a unique subtype that had a gene expression pattern which was very similar to Philadelphia chromosome positive or bcr able ALL. However, these cases were bcr able negative. And we refer to this new subtype as pH-like ALL. Prior to this study, the genetic basis of pH-like ALL was unknown. So from previous clinical trials, we know that the um, outcome of BCR-able ALL can be improved with the addition of tyrosine kinase inhibitors, such as imatinib, to current chemotherapeutic regimes. So the goal of our study was to identify the genetic changes that underlie pH like ALL and that might also prove to be novel targets for directed therapies. To achieve this, we uh, formed a cooperative research study group between the Children's Oncology Group, the National Cancer Institute Target Initiative, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital and the British Cancer Genome Sciences Centre. For this project, we analysed the transcriptome or RNA of 12 pH-like cases using next generation genome sequencing technologies. And strikingly, we identified novel alterations activating kinase, recept kinase or cytokine receptor signaling in 11 of the 12 cases that we studied. And these included novel rearrangements, structural variations and sequence mutations. Frequently, the rearrangements involved um, genes that have been previously known to be dysregulated in other leukemias, and these included ABL1 and the platelet-derived growth factor receptor beta, and also a known um, target of novel therapies called JAK2. 
And um, we also screened a large number of these childhood cases to determine if any of these mutations were recurrent. And we did indeed find additional le uh, similar lesions in other pH-like ALL patients, suggesting that these lesions are a hallmark of this subtype of ALL. So we next went on to uh, see if these fusions could be treated with currently available tyrosine kinase inhibitors. And indeed we showed that specifically the ABLE1 and PDGFR beta rearrangements were sensitive to currently available kinase inhibitors, including imatinib and dasatinib. And furthermore, we also went on to study the JAK2 rearrangements and have shown that these uh, fusions respond remarkably well to the JAK2 inhibitor ruxolitinib, which has recently been approved by the FDA for the treatment of myeloproliferative disorders. So together, our data suggests that patients harboring these fusions may benefit from the addition of tyrosine kinase inhibitors to their current chemotherapeutic reg regimes. And the future goals for this study will be to screen further patients so that we can identify the full spectrum of genetic alterations that are in pH-like ALL. And this may also uncover um, additional novel targets for directed development of new therapies. And furthermore, we plan to implement screening of all patients at diagnosis to identify those which have pH-like ALL and therefore may benefit from the addition of more aggressive and targeted regimens to the current um, treatments, thereby improving the outcome for these patients and they're improving the overall survival for high-risk ALL. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, finally, Dr. James Kokendurfer will discuss new data representing important progress in the development of a promising new treatment approach for B cell malignancies using genetically engineered T cells. And this study is outlined in abstract 167. Thank you, Dr. Kalman. Thank you for inviting me. Um, Okay, um, good morning. The work that I will discuss today was conducted in the surgery branch of the National Cancer Institute. Um, the chief of the surgery branch is Steven Rosenberg, who has um, conducted research in T-cell therapy for approximately three to four decades. Um, so much of the work that I present today is based on a program established by other people, and when I refer to we in my talk, I'm referring to all the authors of my abstract. Um, our work involved treating lymphoma and leukemia patients with genetically modified T cells. The, um, the T cells of the patients were genetically mo modified so that they could specifically recognize the malignant cells of the patient's um, leukemia or lymphoma. We obtained T cells from the blood of patients and genetically modified them to express a receptor called a chimeric antigen receptor. This is abbreviated CAR or CAR. After genetic modification, the cells were infused back into the patients. The target that the CAR-expressing T cells attacked was the protein CD19. CD19 is found on the surface of leukemias and lymphomas that arise from B cells. CD19 is also found on normal B cells. We refer to, T -cell, to the T cells used in our study as anti-CD19 CAR-expressing T cells. The abstract that I will present tomorrow describes the results of the first eight patients treated on our phase one clinical trial of these genetically modified T cells. The clinical trial consists of a combination of chemotherapy, an infusion of anti-CD19 CAR-expressing T cells, and administration of interleukin-2, a cytokine that can stimulate the activity of the infused T cells. We found that um, lymphocyte-depleting chemotherapy can enhance the activity of the infused T cells, and that's why the chemotherapy is administered before the T cells are infused. All patients treated on our trial had very advanced lymphoma or leukemia. All the leukemia patients in our trial had um, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. All patients treated on the trial had progressive disease despite at least three prior lines of therapy. Six of the eight patients treated on our study obtained either a partial or complete remission. Four of the six remissions are ongoing at the current time. Four out of the eight patients had a depletion of their normal B cells. This is a very interesting result because, as I said, the normal B cells express CD19, so de depletion of the normal B cells is an indication that our infused T cells actually have biologic activity in the patients. Um, 
in addition to these positive findings, um, the patients also experienced significant toxicity. One patient died with um, a severe case of influenza pneumonia that occurred when he was cytopenic early after the cell infusion. Several other patients had significant episodes of low blood pressure as well as other toxicities such as fevers and fatigue. These toxicities all peaked within two weeks after the cell infusion and resolved completely. In summary, infusions of T cells genetically modified to express a receptor targeting CD19 eliminated CD19 expressing cells in patients. A combination of chemotherapy and infusions and an infusion of CAR expressing T cells resulted in six of eight patients achieving um, remissions. Substantial toxicity occurred, however. Administration of genetically modified T cells is an especially exciting area of cancer research because early results from medical, many clinical trials demonstrate a potent anti-cancer activity of T cells. In addition, the approaches used to genetically modify T cells can be rapidly changed and tested, so rapid progress in this field is anticipated. The results of the um, study have been published. Um, um, the first patient was reported as a case report um, which was the first to demonstrate depletion of B cells from patients by um, anti-CD19 CAR expressing T cells. This was published in Blood in 2010, um, just as a case report. And then just two days ago, on Blood First Edition, um, we published the results of the first eight patients, which basically gives the same content as the abstract, but in, in much more detail. And my abstract presentation will be tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. in the gene therapy session. Thank you.